get ready to unleash your inner 3D wizard because today we're diving into a super fun blender tutorial where we're gonna whip up a scrumptious ice cream cone from scratch. We'll model the cone, pile on the flavors, and sprinkle in some sweet textures that'll make your mouth water, just like a summer day. Whether you're a total newbie or a seasoned pro, I promise we're going to have a blast together. So grab your virtual spoons, put on your best ice cream hat, and let's create a dessert that looks so good. You'll wanna take a bite out of your screen. Let's get this party started. All right, let's start by clearing the scene. Select everything and hit delete. Give me a second to enable the screencast tool. Now you can see every key or shortcut I use at the bottom left of the screen. Press Shift A to add a cylinder. We're going to change the vertices to 16, which will be the base for our ice cream cone. Jump into edit mode and stress scale it up on the z-axis to give it that cone shape. Add a loop cut and slide it up a bit. Now select the bottom edge, scale it down, press I to inset the face and extrude it out slightly. Scale it down again and then delete the face. Select the edge, press Ctrl-5 and choose grid fill to close off the bottom of the cone. Next, let's add another loop cut below the first one and then add two more above it. In face select mode, select these horizontal faces and scale them up a little to create some texture. Add another loop cut in the middle and scale that as well. Now select the top faces, scale them up while holding Shift Z to scale only on the X and Y axes. Move the faces up slightly. Delete the top face and add three loop cuts below the first one. Select these middle faces, scale them up, and add one more loop cut to scale as well. To keep the edges sharp, select these edges, press in to open the side menu, and under the item tab, increase the mean crease to 0.9. This will ensure the edges stay sharp after we add the subdivision surface modifier. Add a few more loop cuts for extra detail. Press Alt-Z for X-ray mode, Select the necessary faces, and from the face menu, choose poke faces to add a vertex in the middle. Select those vertices, press Alt-Z to return to solid view, rend, and scale them down using Shift-Shift-Z to scale only on the X and Y axes. Now press Control plus the plus sign on your numpad to expand the selection and set the mean crease to one. Switch back to object mode, press Ctrl-2 to add a subdivision surface modifier, and don't forget to shade smooth. And there you go. We've got our ice cream cone ready. All right, let's move on to creating the actual ice cream swirl using a curve. First, we need to position the 3D cursor at the top center of the cone. In edit mode, select the atop edge loop of the cone, then press Shift-S and choose cursor to selected. This snaps the cursor right where we want it. Next, press Shift-A, go to Curves, then Curve Spirals, and add an Archimedean Curve. If you don't see this option, head over to Edit Preferences. Under the Add-ons tab, search for Extra Objects, and make sure the box next to Add Curve Extra Objects is checked. Now that you have the Archimedean Curve, adjust the following settings in the properties. Radius, increase it to match the top of the cone. Height, set it to about 0.6. Increase the number of turns to 6. Radius growth, adjust this until the tip narrows down nicely. Set the steps to 4. Once that's done, let's start moving things around. Select the top vertex of the curve. Enable proportional editing by pressing O and make sure connected only is ticked. Now move the vertices around to get a smooth shape. Use the scroll wheel to adjust the area of influence as needed. Press A to select everything. Now, under the Curve menu, change the Spline Type to Bezier. This will smooth out the curve. To further refine the curve, go to the Control Points menu and change the Handle Type to Automatic. This will give you smooth, natural curves to work with. Now let's create the swirl shape. Add a circle and reduce the vertices to 12. In Edit Mode, press the Backslash key to solo the circle. Uh, this makes it easier to work on. Select every other vertex of the circle and scale them down, forming a star shape. 
Once you're happy with the shape, move it to the side. Here's where it gets interesting. We're gonna extrude this star along the curve to create the swirl effect. It's simple, but you need to follow these steps carefully. First, set the origin point of the star to its center. Select the star, go to the Object menu, choose Set Origin and select Origin to Geometry. Now the origin is centered on the star. Next, align the origin of the curve with the star. Select the star, press Shift and choose Cursor to Selected. Now select the curve and under the Object menu, choose Set Origin and select Origin to 3D Cursor. With both origins aligned, you're now set to extrude the swirl along the curve. All right, now that we've set up the origins properly, we can dive right into adding the key modifiers that'll give our ice cream that classic swirl look. First up, we're gonna add a screw modifier to our star shape. Go to the modifiers tab, slap on that screw modifier, and tweak a few things. Set the screw length to 0.6 and the angle to 60 degrees. You'll start seeing that nice swirly shape forming. We're off to a good start, but there's more to go. Next, we need to add an array modifier. Now, by default, it's going to array along the x-axis, but we need it to follow the z-axis. So go ahead and change the, change the x value to 0 and the z value to 1. Oh, and don't forget to check that merge box. This will make sure there are no gaps or seams between our arrayed objects. Now, here's the magic part. Change the fit type to fit curve and use the little eyedropper tool to select our curve. This will make the array follow the length of the curve perfectly. It's starting to look like an ice cream, right? To smooth things out, let's go ahead and add a curve modifier. Just like before, use the eyedropper to pick the curve object, and since our array is moving along the z-axis, we're also gonna change the deform axis to z. Boom, we've got a swirl following the curve. Now to make everything even smoother, press Ctrl-2 to add a subdivision surface modifier. It's looking way more like a real ice cream swirl now, but we're not done yet. Jump back into edit mode and scale down the star mesh to tighten up the swirl. Don't worry if it's not perfect, we're about to fine tune it with the curve itself. So go ahead and select the curve. If you can't see it, just grab it from the outliner. Now hop into edit mode and pick the vertex at the top of the curve. Press Alt S to scale it down and move it inside the cone so it's nice and hidden. Adjust any other parts of the curve that seem off. Just use proportional editing to make your life easier so you can get those smooth, gradual changes. Keep tweaking the curve until it looks just right. For the tip of the ice cream, select the very last vertex, Alt S to scale it down all the way and move it around until it looks like a nice, finished swirl. Now that we've got the swirl looking good, let's make sure it stays attached to the cone. We don't want it flying off when we move things around. So let's parent the swirl to the cone. In the outliner, select all the objects, but make sure the cone is selected last, because that's what we're parenting everything to. Now press Ctrl P and choose Object Keep Transform. This way, whenever we move or scale the cone, the swirl comes along for the ride. Perfect. All right, now let's add the label. For this, we're gonna use a cylinder mesh. First, make sure proportional editing is off if it's still active. Then, scale up the cylinder in edit mode to match the cone. Delete any faces you don't need and add some loop cuts to the remaining mesh. Right click and select subdivide to get those nice divisions. Now, let's add a shrink wrap modifier to the label. Set the target to the cone and increase the offset to 0.03 so it sits nicely on top of the cone. Finally, press Ctrl-2 for that subdivision surface modifier and shade smooth to round things out. Don't forget to parent the label to the cone as well. And just like that, you've got a fully modeled ice cream cone, complete with a beautiful swirl and a custom label. Looking sweet. All right, now let's dive into adding some tasty materials to our ice cream. First off, we need to make some space for the shader editor and also open up a UV editor window so we can see exactly what's happening. Once you've got those ready, switch over to material preview mode so we can start working on the textures. Select the ice cream and add a new basic material. Set the roughness to zero for now, just so we start with a nice reflective base before adding any other details. 
For the base color, we're going to do something a little special. Add a wave texture node and a color ramp node. Connect the color output of the wave texture to the factor input of the color ramp. Now hit Control shift left click on the color ramp node so we can preview the changes. If that shortcut isn't working for you, go into Edit Preferences Add-ons, search for Node Wrangler and make sure it's enabled. Now let's adjust the wave texture. Change the scale to 0.7 and set the band's direction to the Y axis. This will align the texture in a way that gives us a nice layered look. Next, it's time to play around with the color ramp sliders. Hit the plus sign on the color ramp to add more sliders and change the colors to match your favorite ice cream flavors. I'm going with dark chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. Let me know what flavors you'd go with in the comments. Now adjust the sliders to control how much of each flavor appears. Also, change the interpolation from linear to ease to smooth out those transitions between the flavors. Next, we're going to duplicate this setup. Select the wave texture and color ramp nodes, then press Shift D to duplicate them. Select the duplicated color ramp and hit backspace to reset the color ramp to its default. Then adjust the wave texture scale to eight and tweak the color ramp until you get a nice subtle variation. Now plug this into the roughness input of the principled BSDF shader. This will give us some nice texture and variation in how the ice cream reflects light. To finish things off, let's add a bump node. Connect the color ramp to the height input of the bump node, and then connect the bump node to the normal input of the principled BSDF shader. If the bump looks inverted, you can click the invert option in the bump node to flip it. Finally, adjust the strength of the bump to around 0.16 so it's subtle but effective. And just like that, we've got some deliciously detailed ice cream going on. All right, now it's time to move on to texturing the cone. First, set the base color to a nice light brown, something that really gives off that crunchy cone vibe. Set the roughness all the way to one to make the surface a bit more matte. Next, we'll add some texture. Drop in a noise texture node, a color ramp node, and a bump node. Connect the color output of the noise texture to the factor input of the color ramp. Then crank up the scale on the noise texture to about 72 2 to get some nice fine detail. Adjust the sliders on the color ramp to get the right look and plug the output into the height input of the bump node. Now connect the bump node to the normal input of the principled BSDF shader. Finally, reduce the bump strength to about 0.116. And just like that, we've got a cone that looks nice and crunchy. Now, if you've watched this far and you still haven't subscribed, come on, what are you waiting for? Let's keep going. Next up is the label. Start by adding a new basic material. Select the principled BSDF and hit Control T to add an image texture node. Make sure you've got Node Wrangler enabled for that shortcut to work. Now, locate your label design. I'll link the one I'm using in the description if you want to follow along with the same image. Now, Let's do a little UV unwrapping to fit the image onto our cone properly. Hop into edit mode, select this edge right here, press U and choose mark seam. Press A to select everything and hit U again to unwrap. Now in the UV editor, select everything and adjust it until your image fits perfectly. All right, the label is looking good, but I wanna add something special to it. Before that though, let's fix this issue over here. Head back to the shader editor and under the image texture node, change the repeat setting to extend. That should solve the problem. Now for the fun part, select the label and hit tab to enter edit mode. In the, in the UV editor, make sure UV sync selection is enabled. This way, whatever we select in the UV tab will also be selected in, in edit mode. Now select all the faces that cover the logo and hold shift to deselect any unwanted ones. Next, head to the Vertex Properties tab, add a new vertex group, and let's name it Logo. Click Assign to assign the selected faces to the group. 
you can hit select under the vertex group to double check it's all set. Now apply the first shrink wrap modifier. Then add a new shrink wrap modifier and set the cone as the target object. Increase the offset to about 0.01. Finally, under vertex group, select the group we just created and this will only affect the part we need it to. To fix any issues, click on the icon that inverts the vertex group and now everything's looking sharp. All right, now let's set up our camera. First, add a camera by pressing Shift A and then press Control Alt Numpad 0 to align the camera to the view. Next, press N to bring up the side menu. Head over to the View tab and check Lock Camera to View. This will let us move around while staying in the camera view, so go ahead and position your shot until it looks just right. And don't forget to turn off the lock camera to view once you're done, so you don't accidentally move the camera again. Now, let's duplicate and arrange our ice cream cones. Select the cone, and in the outliner, right-click on the selected object and choose Select Hierarchy. This will grab all the objects parented to the cone, including the ice cream. Hit Shift-D to duplicate, then right-click to snap the duplicate right back into place. Now, rotate it and move it along the x-axis, creating some nice variety in the layout. To change the flavor of the ice cream, select the ice cream mesh itself, then hop into the shader editor. You'll notice a number next to the material. Click it to make the material a single user. This allows us to modify the colors without affecting the original cone. Tweak the colors however you like. I'm going for a different flavor here. Let's jump back into the camera view and duplicate this ice cream. Right click to snap it back in place again. Now press to open the side menu and under item, adjust the Y rotation from a negative to a positive number. Do the same for the X location, switching it to a positive value as well, just to give the scene some variety. Let's give this duplicate its own unique flavor too. Go back to the shader editor, click that little number next to the material to make it a single user. And I'm going for a bright pink strawberry flavored ice cream this time. Now let's switch back to the 3D viewport and add a plane, which will serve as our background. Rotate the plane and scale it up nice and big. Position it behind the cones until you feel it looks just right. I'm setting the base color of the plane to a light blue, which will give our scene a soft, fresh look. All right, folks, it's time to render out our scene. First, let's switch to the rendered view mode so we can see how everything looks in real time. Now head over to the World Properties tab and add a new environment texture. Locate your HDI file. I'm using Blender's default HDRI for this tutorial, but you can choose your favorite. Next up, let's change our rendering engine to Cycles. If you've got a GPU, make sure to set the rendering device to GPU for faster renders. Now scroll down a bit and under the Film section, tick the Transparent checkbox. This will hide the environment texture from, from both the viewport and the final render, giving us a cleaner look. Now let's adjust the color management settings. You can change the look to increase the contrast, which will really help make those colors pop. Next, we want to set the roughness of the plane to zero. This will give it a smooth finish that contrasts nicely with the textured ice cream. Now it's time to set your render samples. I'm going with 200 samples for this render, but feel free to adjust based on your system's capabilities and how much time you want to spend on rendering. Once you're all set, hit that render button and watch your masterpiece come to life. And there you have it, folks. We've successfully created a delicious looking ice cream cone complete with all the details and textures. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more amazing Blender content. If you have any questions or want to share your own creations, drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching and happy blending. See you in the next video.